work for Healthy Golf and just share a couple little stories and things. Um, so I'll start out by talking about back in the early 1980s, there was a, a kid growing up with his mother, just the two of them, and they lived in the Maryland suburbs outside of Washington, D.C. And they lived in a you know typical suburban area. You pretty much have to get in the car and do anything. But when they went out to do fun stuff, and they went out to get dinner and hang out and shop, they went into the wonderful little historic seaport town of Annapolis, Maryland. And as that kid grew up and became a teenager and even a young adult, that's where he continued to go to hang out with his friends and, and just enjoy public life, going into a little cafe and walking around everywhere. Well, that kid now is me. Um, <laughs> and it really began a lifelong journey about the environment and, and the way we understand cities. Because if you had asked me then, why did I love downtown Annapolis so much and walking everywhere? I'd say, I don't know. I just like I like the storefronts. I like seeing people. You know, I like the, the fact that the cars are tamed and it's quiet and, and I can walk everywhere and just enjoy it. But through this lifelong journey of environmental issues and city planning and all these things, you know, now I can describe to you from a technical standpoint, right, why, why it works so well. And the basic thing to understand is that that's a place built for people. And we've done nothing but really built for cars for the last 70 years, right? And so, so many of the environmental issues that I deal with really relate back to that. And that, I think one of the ways to look at life is um, if, you're, if you're exploring life and you're, and you're seeking knowledge, then you should have a series, some epiphanies along the way, right? And so one of my first ones I can think about was when I was in graduate school at the University of West Florida studying environmental science and coastal issues. And really I came to understand that almost every issue I was studying in the classroom related back to the way we, the way we use the land and the way we build our communities, again. So that got me even more interested in this and back to that, you know, again, that inspiration I had growing up in a place and having access to a place like, uh, like, like Annapolis, Maryland. And then another epiphany I had as I continued to work on environmental issues and you're trying to like educate people and try to get people to shift the way they live and live more environmentally friendly lives and such. But really, and this is important to understand, our, our environmental impact is really mostly set by the shape of our built environment. It's the way the buildings are laid out, it's the way the streets are laid out, and so we know when people live in walkable places, where they have choices in how to get around, and again, places built for people, the way we built everything before World War II, the way those great European cities are, and the old parts of any any city in, in America in small town pre-World War II, um, again, those are places built largely for people. They perform environmentally vastly better, um, and people who live in those places they use less energy, they use less water, they use, uh, they, they occupy less land and, 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 and less wildlife habitat, they emit fewer greenhouse gas emissions, they emit less water runoff. But they don't get up in the morning and say, you know, I'm going to live this environmentally friendly life. They're just living the way the built environment helps them live, right? Because they have a corner store a few blocks away, and there's a park a couple blocks away to go to, and they have daily needs within the neighborhood, and they don't have to get in a car to do everything. So that's, that's an epiphany there. Another epiphany that I had later was when you try to talk to audiences about we need to shift our lives uh, and, and do these things for the, for the planet, that doesn't really work very well. So what I really came to understand is making it very personal. And I can tell you, because I've set up my life this way for over 25 years to live near downtown, live about a mile that way, where I walk and bike everywhere. And the world is a richer place when you do that. That's how we are, human body is made to move naturally. And so, when I'm walking through my neighborhood, when I'm biking through my neighborhood, I know it at a deeper level than you can ever know when you're experiencing it only by car. And so as I'm moving throughout my neighborhood and throughout all of our communities here, um, I enjoy the smells. I can tell you what's blooming, okay? I can smell people cooking dinner. Um, I can smell people smoking pot sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I, I can tell you what the weather's doing, right? Because I know when, you, when you're outside, you know which way the wind's blowing, you know if it might rain soon because you want to get home. Um, I'm using my senses fully, and I was given these senses to use them, not to just sit in a metal box and be isolated and not to, not to stimulate my, my senses. And so um, but one of the greatest things is being able to just pull up and talk to people, right? Somebody's working in their garden, um, somebody's fixing up an old house, and when you're walking or you're on a bike, you just pull right up, and you can start having that conversation immediately in a way that you can't have by car. And so um, I think life is just better that way. Um, yeah, environmentally, it's vastly superior, but it's hard for people to understand that. But what I would say is just your life life is better. The quality of life is better. You're using your senses fully. And so it's a, it's it, the world is a richer place when you're moving naturally. And so that's why I think we need to continue to work toward that. Um, 
you know, Bob mentioned, I think last time, you know, I talked about the whales that I've 